So that's a great way to maximize your discounts as your needs change. Reservations are purchased regionally, but you have flexible scoping options. Welcome back to the Azure Essential Show. I'm Thomas, and today my colleague Priyanshi Mittal is joining me to talk about managing Azure OpenAI service reservations. Welcome to the show. Great to be here, Thomas. Thank you for having me. So when you deploy Azure services, you usually can take benefit of these pay-as-you-go models. Uh, but obviously, when you like deploy these services, you have the option to use Azure reservations. Uh, which gives you great cost savings in general. Now, this is especially also true, obviously, with the Azure OpenAI service, which we're going to talk about today. So could you start us off with an overview of provisioned reservations and why they matter? Absolutely. So customers can use provision throughput units, or PTUs, to reserve blocks or capacity in Azure OpenAI service. This ensures that they get predictable performance and consistent latency, even during peak times, which is very crucial for production generative AI applications today. Now, on top of that, as an added benefit, customers can significantly save money on these PTUs by purchasing Azure reservations. That's a great combo. Reliable performance plus cost savings. That sounds exactly what our customers are looking for. Why should customers pay attention to how they manage these reservations? So proper management of Azure reservations is very crucial for optimizing cost. You want to ensure your provision deployments align with your actual usage patterns. When your reservations aren't applying to your resources, you aren't getting the benefit that you get, could get for your reservations. Yeah, that makes makes obviously a lot of sense. I mean, we always want to get the most out of, of this. So what are some effective ways customers can manage their reservation? So let me start about uh, exchanging reservations. So customers can exchange their PTU reservations to a different region, different deployment type, payment method, or even um, term length. This flexibility to exchange reservations helps you adapt to your evolving needs and uh, evolving deployments as well. Could you give us an example on how this might work in practice? Yes, absolutely. So let's say our customer has purchased a 50 regional provision uh, reservation in US West. They would have several options for exchanges as long as they meet the financial criteria. For instance, they could exchange to 50 regional um, to data zone or global provision reservations in the same US West region if they need a different deployment type or they could even move to a different region altogether. So let's say exchanging to 50 data zone or global provision reservations in Sweden Central. Or they could also keep the same deployment type and region and exchange their commitment from, let's say, one month to one year as well. Oh, this sounds great and gives, obviously, a lot of flexibility in that case. Um, could you walk us through how this actually works and how you actually perform an exchange? Yes, of course. So let's go to Azure portal. And when I uh, go on reservations blade, which I can quickly do by going on search bar, um, let's take an example where my reservation is not used at all. And I want to exchange it. So I click on exchange. I select the quantity. And then I click on purchase. Select which deployment type or let's say region or uh, term I want. So let's say that I want to use another region completely. So I click on my SKU type, and then I see that, OK, this is the one that I want to return, and this is the one I want to uh, purchase. Only financial restriction is that the total purchase cost should be greater than the total canceled commitment. OK, that makes sense. So exchanging reservations gives us flexibility with deployment types and regions. Uh, what about changing the scope for existing reservations? So that's a great way to maximize your discounts as your needs change. Reservations are purchased regionally, but you have flexible scoping options. You can scope reservations to individual resource group or subscription or group of subscriptions within a management group or to all subscriptions within a billing account. The billing context will depend on the subscription you use to purchase the reservation. OK, fantastic. So. Could you show us how someone would actually update the scope of their reservation? Absolutely. So I am here on the reservation. I go to settings. I go to configuration. 
And here, my uh, the reservation that I've selected is uh, scope to a single subscription. I can choose to have a different subscription altogether, or I can choose to have different uh, sub scope selected as well. Awesome. That's easy to manage. So next, let's talk about renewals. I imagine it's important not to let reservations lapse if you still use hourly PTUs. Absolutely, it is. So setting up renewals ensures you continue to receive benefits without having to closely monitor when each reservation expires, which obviously can be very management heavy. The system will automatically purchase a replacement when an existing reservation is about to expire. This feature is actually in enabled by default during the purchase, but you can toggle it on and off at any point in time before the reservation expires. Oh, that makes sense, and it's great. But you know, I know that you prepared something here. So could you show us how to actually set up a renewal? Absolutely. So again, going back to the reservations blade, I've selected the reservation I want to set renewal on. So I have two options. One is I automatically renew the uh, reservation type, or I can also choose to purchase a reservation uh, at the time of expiry with different settings. So for example, let's say that I want to now purchase a one month or uh, I want to change the frequency uh, billing plan or so on. And then I click on save and voila, my reservation would automatically be renewed. Fantastic. So we covered exchanging reservations, changing the scope, and setting up renewals. Anything else we should know about managing Azure reservations? Yes. So one thing I do want to point out is that all these management tasks that we covered today apply to all reservation uh, services that we have, not just reservations for Azure OpenAI service provisioned. So you can use the same processes for all other reservation services, such as virtual machines, storage, SQL, and so on. Fantastic. So these strategies apply across all the whole Azure uh, ecosystem. Priyanji, this has been incredibly helpful information for our viewers. Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your insights about managing provisioned reservations. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. To learn more about PTUs, I recommend watching our previous Azure Essentials show episode, specifically on deploying OpenAI service at scale, as well as our episode on monitoring reservations, which dives deeper into tracking utilizations. You can find the links to the resources we covered today in the episode description below. Give us a like and subscribe to the channel to get notified when a new episode drops. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time on the Azure Essentials show.